people decline faster, some people decline slower, but this is just in general it's talking about. Um, of course, along with that, maximum heart rate declines because like I said, after age 30, um, your body starts to just decline in general by 1% altogether, all functions. See, older patients uh, with internal bleeding will not exhibit heart rate as rapid as expected. So this is because, again, it's going back to the fact that everything is starting to decline. Um, so they can't compensate as effectively as they used to when they were younger. So that's why you won't see that, that increase in heart rate um, during bleeding uh, to compensate for that loss of blood. Uh, if unaware, EMT may miss uh, what older patient is in shock, or uh, when older patient is in shock. That old, sorry, uh, mental status. So yeah, so because of that, because of the, of the fact that we can't really depend on the patient compensating and showing us signs of compensation, um, we uh, want to depend more on the patient's mental status more than anything else to let us know how they're doing. Um, and that's from when we uh, get the patient until we deliver them at the ER. So you're really gonna have a big focus on mental status when it comes to your geriatric population, which I believe is uh, 65 years or older. See, causes of patient communication difficulty. So these are reasons why you would have issues communicating with that geriatric patient. Again, because everything is starting to decline. Um, hearing loss, that, that's a big one. But again, just because the patient is geriatric doesn't mean you have to scream right off the bat. First, try to get a baseline. Talk to them in a normal tone of voice. That's what I would do. And then if they can't hear you, then elevate your voice as needed. Because a, a lot of geriatrics, uh, they find it offensive for you to just automatically think they can't hear or understand just because they're older. So don't assume that they can't hear and don't assume that they're mentally altered um, until you see otherwise, just to not offend the patient. Uh, of course, vision impairment, that's a big one too, memory loss. And when talking about the intention, uh, it's talking about teeth. So these patients that have um, uh, dentures, for example, they lose teeth. So one thing since I'm talking about uh, dentures is um, if you have a patient that has dentures and you have to ventilate them with the BVM, you do not have to take those dentures off. If anything, you want to leave those in place because they're gonna help with the seal from the BVM mask. Now, the only time you take those dentures out of there is if they actually become dislodged and now they're obstructing the airway. But if they're staying intact, do not touch them, just leave them in, in place. Uh, and then it says here, residual effects of stroke or dementia. So, for those of you that don't remember, a stroke, I like to compare it to a heart attack. So because it, when, in a heart attack, what you have is you have a clot in one of the vessels that feeds the heart itself, right? So if you have a clot in one of those vessels, that means that a part of your heart is not getting oxygen and it's starting to die. Well, a stroke means that there's a clot in the brain and one of the vessels that feed the brain. And there's a clot there, then a part of that brain is not gonna get oxygen and it's gonna start to die. It's just how the tissue of the heart does not come back to life, whatever's dead stays there, stays dead, that's pretty much how the brain functions too. Now, the brain can uh, make new pathways and uh, rewire itself, but though the tissue that's dead is gonna stay dead. Um, and I actually found a, a pretty decent video on this as well, so I'm gonna show it right now. Um, just let me read the last bullet and see what I can if I can say anything about that. Uh, first, assume altered mental status as a result of present injury illness. Yeah, so if your patient is mentally altered, um, and let's say you're coming up to a car accident, or just any car in general, uh, go ahead and assume that them, if they are mentally altered, so now, you, now you've identified that they are mentally altered, that it is from, as a result of the actual injury or, or illness, the chief complaint that you are there for, okay? Um, and then of course, the way you know that is by either looking through their charts, a caregiver, 
um, family member, anybody that's there to take care of that person if there is somebody there. And uh, let me find that video to share with you. 